What's up everybody? Today I'm going to be talking about how to take pictures of the night sky, specifically with the Canon 80D. I've had this camera for about a year now. It's a great camera. Um, it's really good for anyone who is looking to get into both photography and videography. So rule number one, do your research. This means that you need to check the weather and make sure that the skies are going to be clear. Um, clouds at night can uh, make it really difficult to get pictures of the Milky Way. Next, make sure the location is away from city lights. Having any sort of city light or light pollution, as they call it, can really affect your image. It can make it really hard for your eyes to see the stars and also your camera to see the stars. One tool that I really like to use when trying to find an area that is far away from light pollution is the Blue Marble Light Pollution website. Uh, I'll link to it in the description below, but they basically show you a map and show you the areas that have the most light pollution and the areas that have the least light pollution. Rule number two, use a wide angle lens. So I would recommend using the widest lens that you have. One of my favorite lenses that I use when taking pictures of the stars is my Tamron 17 to 50 millimeter f2.8. Um, I've had this lens for uh, probably two and a half years and it's been great. Um, the 17 millimeter gives it a really wide angle and then the 2.8 aperture lets in a lot of light which is definitely what you want when you're taking pictures of the stars. Rule number three, use a tripod. Whenever you take long exposures such as Milky Way shots or nighttime shots, you always want to use a tripod. If you don't use a tripod, if you try and use just your hands, you're not going to get a clear image. Um, this is probably the most important rule. Uh, so I've got a ProMaster tripod uh, and it's been really great. Um, it's very sturdy. Uh, it doesn't really matter what brand you get, um, just make sure that your tripod can hold your equipment um, steady enough. Rule number four, always make sure that you are shooting in RAW format. Um, the reason why this is so important is because RAW format allows you to make a lot of adjustments in post. So whenever you take photos of the night sky, you're going to want to make some uh, necessary adjustments in Lightroom. I'm going to be talking about this a lot more uh, in part two of this video. Um, but for now, just always be sure that you are shooting in RAW. Number five, shoot in manual. And for that, I mean both the camera settings and your lens uh, focus settings. So when shooting in manual for your camera settings up here, uh, this will allow you to adjust the aperture, the ISO, and the shutter speed. Those three things are essential when you're taking photos of the night sky. You're going to be adjusting all three of those and usually you have to play around with them a little bit uh, to get the picture that you want. So the reason why I like to shoot uh, manual focus when I'm taking pictures of the, of the night sky is because most wide angle lenses will have an infinity mark. So on my Tamron, you can see it over here, there is an infinity mark right there on the lens. Um, so I can just make sure that it is set, the focus is set to infinity and that should keep the stars in focus or the landscape in focus with the stars uh, as much as possible. What I usually do is I use my phone flashlight um, to just make sure that my lens is set to infinity right, be right before I take the picture. Rule number six. Find your camera's ISO sweet spot. So ISO or ISO um, basically allows your camera to bring in more light. It's artificial light, it's not um, natural light, so it can add a lot of noise to your image if you bump it up too high. So the key there is to just take a handful of photos uh, and adjust the ISO as needed. Rule number eight, and I'm going to go into this more in depth in part two of this video, but only make the necessary adjustments in Lightroom uh, when you're editing in post. Just wanted to show you a little bit um, of 
what we do when we're out here in actually in the field taking pictures so i've got my camera set up here um, as you can see i've got it on a tripod i've got my camera set to uh, an aperture of 2.8 so it should let in a, a lot of light on my camera i actually have the drive set to two second delay um, that prevents me from bumping the camera which can um, get it out of focus or just mess up the the final image. My shutter speed is set to 15 seconds. Um, I try and keep it under 20 seconds. Once you get above 20 seconds, it begins to add a, um, a trail to the stars, which makes them look a bit blurry or out of focus. And my ISO is set to 1600 right now. Um, a lot of the times this is 1600 is way too high um, because it can add a lot of grain or noise Usually with stars, it's okay to go a bit higher than you're used to because in post, we'll be cleaning it up later with some noise reduction. Uh, I usually play around with the ISO on different shots, so I might do 16, 1600 now and then try to back it down to 1000 or 800 and see if I get uh, better images with, with those ISO levels. So this is the photo that I just took using the settings which I just described. Um, again, there's going to be some uh, edits that we make in post such as noise reduction and adjusting the temp temperature of the photo but overall I'm really happy with it. I'm, again I might uh, try a few other settings such as lowering the ISO, um, maybe adjusting the shutter speed uh, but overall it looks great. So that's it guys. Those are my six rules for taking pictures of the night sky. Uh, next week I'm going to be releasing a video where I go through and actually edit a picture of the night sky so that you can see that process and you can see the adjustments that I make in post. Um, so stay tuned for that video and I'll see you later.